still in the nursery establishment. Once you establish your nursery, here is back to the nursery of around 10 meters by uh, one meter. And uh, the one meter by uh, one meter by 10 meter, uh, the one meter width is important so that you're able to manage uh, very well. Uh, instead of maybe once you have a, a, a longer length, you may be forced to step inside the, the, the nursery bed. But once you have one meter, you're able, once you stand here, you're able to reach here. Once you start here, you're able to reach the middle. So it, it is a, a convenient length, uh, width of the uh, nursery. Uh, we encourage you don't to put too much manure again, uh, but you just put sufficient manure that is able to mix very well with the soil. So once you are uh, once you're able to put that manure, then you mix that manure with the soil uh, on the bed, and then from there now you are able to uh, the next step is now to prepare uh, the hybrid of the of the two nurseries that I said you raise it and then you uh, sunken it at the top. So after you are able to do that, uh, you do that. The next step is now to uh, to draw the lines to put the lines where you are going to uh, to plant and uh, maybe just before you do the lines we also encourage first of all you do watering do good watering such that the water penetrates the depths of the nursery bed uh, till the nursery bed is well watered so after you uh, you water the bed very well after that now you are you are able to uh, you come with a uh, uh, an implement to establish the lines and uh, establishing the line the lines you can even use a stick at this what you just do you just measure six inches and then you, you just use a stick to uh, do the lines the lines should not be so deep uh, they just be fairly deep uh, maybe an inch deep one inch deep so that when you establish the seeds the seeds uh, are uh, not covered by too much soil because if they are covered with too much soil they're going to find that uh, they may not germinate so after you establish the lines on the lines and then we come now to the planting uh, establishing the seed the technique you use here we say you establish the seeds sparingly uh, like you don't crowd the seeds on the lines because once you crowd the seeds on the lines means some seeds are going to be on top of each other and maybe they may fail to germinate some of them even if they germinate they germinate very thin uh, which may not ideal to be established in the field so in short you get losses so what we shall do we shall advise at least when you are establishing each seed to be separate uh, not to overcrowd the seed so it's a technique that uh, uh, is very important during nursery establishment and of course, once you have losses on the, or, or, or losses on the nursery, um, of course, uh, you are going to reduce on the production that you are going to have in the field. And actually, uh, a lot of losses usually occur here because you find if you don't establish very well, you find uh, some seeds don't germinate. And if they don't germinate, you find you have losses. You may incur even a loss of even 30% of your seeds um, in the nursery. And also, if you don't uh, uh, raise it, if you don't raise, raise uh, very well, or maybe your nursery is not flat enough, some, uh, you find maybe some areas uh, the inclination is a bit high, uh, you find that when you water, a lot of water is going to be drained, and in that section, they fail to germinate, or maybe they germinate and they are not very healthy. So those are some of the factors that you are supposed to look at. The nursery bed should be very flat, and then at the edge, I said it should be flat and then uh, sunken. So at the edge, there is a, what we call um, a wall to prevent, uh, when you do watering, to prevent the water from draining off. Because when it drains off, it drains off with the seeds and also it can even drain off uh, and uh, leave the seeds without uh, water and therefore they, they, they don't grow very well. So that's some of the, uh, some of the factors that we are supposed to consider. And once, uh, this is this is a, this is a established similar way to what we uh, is done in uh, spinach and uh, done in uh, tomatoes and also in uh, the other crops like onions. Uh, we have the first thing which is insect control. 
And here in, in, in insect, insect control, we are talking about uh, insects such as uh, termites, such as uh, shaver grubs. And such insects usually attack the young crop uh, or the young seed. So once you establish the seed and then they start germinating, you find that uh, such insects may come to attack the young crops. So here, you are going to use uh, an insecticide with AI imidacloprid. And then we have the diseases. And the diseases here, we are looking at diseases such as uh, root rot uh, or even um, seed rot. We are also looking at diseases such as uh, uh, dumping off, such as um, uh, fusarium and also pythium. So such diseases, we are looking at uh, a product, a, a, a fungicide with an AI carbendazim. And carbendazim is going to act very well on those diseases. And also we are looking at uh, another thing, which is uh, breaking seed dormancy. Because you know, the seed is dry, that is planted here is dry. So before it germinates, you have to break the seed dormancy. And also we have uh, um, a product that can assist in that respect, and we call it uh, a biostimulant. And here we are looking at a biostimulant, uh, mainly um, what we call a seaweed extract seaweed extract that has a component that usually assists in growth uh, in growth uh, growth boosting and also assisting in uh, breaking seed dormancy so what is done you you take these three products in a, in a, the three products you put it in a knapsack sprayer and then before once you establish your seeds you establish your seeds and then you cover lightly you can cover with uh, dry grass so once you cover with dry, dry grass and also you do watering on that uh, on the nursery bed, you do th that watering. Then the final thing you do, you mix these three products and then you, you drench. Drenching is basically you spray on top of the dry grass such that uh, the, 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 the water containing this, uh, these three chemicals goes to the soil or goes, uh, uh, penetrates the, uh, the, the depth. Uh, of the nursery bed. So once that is done, then your nursery will be very well protected. Once uh, that is done, then the next thing uh, will be now the foliage control. Because this, the, the spinach will be uh, established in uh, between, uh, between five, five to seven days, they'll be germinating. And once they germinated, you remove, once germination is like 80%, we advise you remove the grass, the dry grass. And uh, here you may have a cover or you may not, depending on uh, how the area is. If maybe the region is very dry and uh, the, 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 the heat is too much from the sun, then you can do a shade. And uh, if maybe the temperature is not as high, maybe in a higher altitude, mid to high altitude, then you, do, you don't need to cover. And uh, once uh, they germinate, then we have uh, the pest control. And here in terms of the pest control, we are looking at uh, lambda cyhalothrin. That is the active ingredient. Uh, this uh, lambda cyhalothrin is going to, uh, to control pests such as a bollworm that may try to get into the, uh, into the spinach crop. And also may also control other pests, uh, even um, uh, leaf miners that may try to come into the uh, nursery bed. And also we have the diseases. And here we are looking at uh, cymoxanil. And cymoxanil is going to control the leaf spots, the fungal blight and fungal diseases that may try to come into the spinach crop uh, at, at the nursery level. And once you have the two aspects, you also have the nutrition. And here in terms of nutrition, remember initial, initially, uh, you had placed uh, well, very well decomposed manure. You, you had also uh, done a handful of uh, phosphatic fertilizer broadcast onto the, uh, onto the nursery bed. Of course, the next thing now will be uh, the foliar, what we call the secondary supplementation. And here you use uh, what we call the starter, the starter fertilizers or a starter foliar feed. And the starter foliar feed here, we are, we are talking about uh, the foliar feed that are going to be used uh, to give phosphorus 
uh, to the young crop because phosphorus is a nutrient that is used in crop to control uh, or to, uh, to enable very well root establishment and also uh, shoot establishment. And therefore, once you have these three, you can be able to do them, uh, to apply them to the young crop on a weekly basis because we are talking about uh, between four to six weeks and then uh, um, you transplant this crop to the final field. And therefore, once that is done, uh, every week, every seven days, you, uh, or, or you may be even do it earlier depending on uh, how the situation of the nursery is, but seven days will be sufficient. Every seven days, you ensure that is sprayed. And that is usually applied, uh, sprayed on the loop directly and also sprayed on the, on the, on the area where we have the, uh, the, the space, the space between the lines. Because diseases may be developing here and then attacking the uncrop. And therefore you have to do on the crop itself and also you spray uh, to ensure the soil around here has gotten uh, these, uh, these drugs. Mm -hmm.